which is fine by me. I'm glad so many people showed up. It's, it's really cool. Let's wait a couple more minutes before we jump in. But as I said in my vlog yesterday, I want to replace the vlog altogether. Not the, not the travel vlogs though. I enjoy doing them, but the weekly vlogs, I was super inconsistent with them and I will try to, it's showing up on your YouTube page. Perfect. So everybody can watch this now. So I'm trying to be more con consistent with vlogging and with updates. And I thought the live stream would be great. Um, so you guys have a chance to ask me directly. So you watch the video on Sunday and then there are always comments that are kind of repetitive. So I have a chance to reply to those comments and you guys can ask some questions. And it's also easier for me to point out special techniques or materials or tools that I've been working with. So I think it's a, it's a great idea. All right. What's the time? I think, yeah, I think let's, let's just jump right in. So. I did two tests with my beautiful people from Patreon and um, I found out that it's very complicated to uh, read the comments and keep your train of thought and just make this cohesive. So I have help with me today. Lucy is here in the back office. <laughs> she has my computer and she will watch the comments and um, mon uh, was that not monetize, mo monitorize. Moderate. 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 <laughs> and moderate the comments a bit more. So um, if you have questions, she will write them down. And depending on how much time we have at the end of the stream, I will answer as many questions as possible. I think 20 to, 20 to uh, 30 minutes will be a great time frame for this live stream. And the first thing I want to talk about is the behind the build section. And last week I was in New York with Jimmy DeResta at his farmhouse. And although we were there to build a teepee, I did find time to build the champagne sprinkler thing. And one of the comments was, and you're absolutely right about this, uh, a lot of people suggested you should add a snorkel so all the champagne bubbles out even more. And that's actually what we did. Jimmy had the idea because it didn't really work out at the beginning. Um, because I wanted to have this picture of the champagne bottle sitting still on the table, me opening it, and then everything sprays out. It didn't work without the snorkel. Um, it worked fine when you were shaking it, like, a, like on the Formula One, you know, when they're on the winning thing. I don't know what word. Anyways, you know what I mean. Um, but it didn't work when the bottle was sitting still on the table. So Jimmy had the great idea to add the snorkel, and that helped us out tremendously. Um, it, was a, it was a pretty cool built and obviously the the end scene was super funny to shoot because we were i think 20 people um and it almost felt like a like a movie set everybody was watching and everybody was hoping that it, it works and then it didn't work and we had four bottles of champagne that we needed until we got the final shot it was it was a really good time i enjoyed that um especially since i'm working by myself all the time um, it's really cool to have people with suggestions like Jimmy who had the idea to add the snorkel and also people to I don't know just to add to the to the vibe and to the energy it was it was really nice um, yeah so New York was great I'm not sure if you saw the vlog that I uploaded today but I got to see Tom Sachs' studio which was super incredible um, a lot of you guys are probably fans yourself and um, I, I was I think the last time I was that starstruck was when I met Jimmy for the first time last year at the Maker Fair. Um, right. Oh man, I cannot. I have a new lens on my phone, which gives me a bit of a wider angle and a bit more image quality, but I cannot see the comments completely. Um, was that the most surprising thing? Ever? Ah, the most surprising thing about meeting Tom Sachs is that he is really a very, very nice guy. Um, maybe it's just me, but if you have these artists that you look up to and they make completely incredible pieces of art and I don't know, you, I think they must be weird or freaky or somewhat not approachable, but he was the nicest, nicest guy. He took about one and a half hours to show us around and uh, he let us film there. We could touch everything. It was, it was a great experience. I was surprised how normal he was and how nice. All right, so I don't want to jump into the questions already. Um, trying to stay on track behind the bills. All right, so 
I worked on Jimmy's metal lathe for the fir first time to get this taper right. And um, if I don't, probably some of you know that I have this small Emco lathe, which is more like a watchmaker lathe. And then to work on Jimmy's big lathe was awesome. And now I want one. <laughs> I, I, got, I got infected with a, with a lathe bug. And it's just ugh, it's such a beautiful machine. And Jimmy taught me a lot of cool tricks. And then I think the last day before we left, we spent some more time in his shop. And Kevin Lizotte made me this incredibly cool uh, Sharpie cap. So now the Sharpies are kind of disposable. When they're empty, I get rid of them. But I hold on to this super cool cap. Um, the plan is to maybe um, put a magnet and a clip on there so I can have the thing, have the cap on my belt and just take the Sharpie out when I need it and replace it there. But actually, I'm so afraid to lose it that it might end up in my wall of fame in the background um, just for me to stare at it. And the cool thing is, you probably see it, it is knurled. And the tool that Kevin used was a handheld knurling tool. I didn't know that that existed, but it's a very, very cool piece of piece of machine no, not machine it's a it's a very cool handhold it's it's an easy and straightforward tool yet it is so surprising how well it works and how yeah you could even replace the the things and have different patterns um yeah it was it was really cool so i'm not sure if kevin is watching but thank you so much and i really think you should you should make a couple and I always be knurling exactly and um, maybe maybe sell these because it also the, the weight that is added to the sharpie gives it such a feeling of quality it's it's a good good thing all right i think that was it that was it that i wanted to um that's all i wanted to say about the behind the build section the next thing would be updates but let me check with Lucy is every, if everything is cool. Yeah. Everything, everything is cool. cool. Do we have any trolls yet? No. Nope. <laughs> no trolls? <laughs> what? What is happening? I think the internet is broken. Um, right on. So we just saw before we jumped on the live stream that the beer bike hit 1 million views. So that's my first video that has over a million views and I'm super happy about that. I don't know. I um I always say don't don't watch the numbers and don't get caught up in all that and that is true. Still, if a video hits a million, that is a really cool feeling. I'm happy. Yeah, I'm happy that happened. Um next week is going to be a super short week for me because I'm going to Hamburg on Thursday, which leaves me what is that? No. Uh, which um which means I only have 3 days to build my next project. I think I want to build a solution for my records. A couple weeks ago, I built this um, the suitcase record cabinet thing for my turntable. And now the records are just lying on the floor and I really don't like that. So I want to build a cabinet for the records to go into. Um, I, I don't know, it's a tricky thing. I've played around with a couple designs and records are super beautiful itself. But I think it's tricky to to design a container that doesn't just look like a box but if it's too fancy it takes away from the beauty of the records itself so it's a really i'm struggling with the design and i hope i can pull it off in three days if not we will still have the live stream next next sunday and i can tell you why uh, i didn't put up a video but i think it will be fine so far it, it usually works out um i have a couple ideas i ordered some plywood i have some maple and I think I should be fine with that. So we'll see. I have three days to build it. Let's hope it works. Um, as I said, we're going to Hamburg on Thursday. And that is because I'm getting a new tattoo. Very excited about that. I studied design with a guy um, called Philip Lem. I think Lucy will put his link to his Instagram in the show notes. He's crazy talented. He was an illustrator back then in design school and now he works as a tattoo artist and I cannot wait to meet him. The cool thing is that I don't even know what we're tattooing. He is pretty old school, so he makes these sheets where he draws designs and then you can go there and just pick one and then that's yours. So I'm very excited. Um, that's it. And then also in Hamburg on Saturday, I think, is a, is a mini festival. 
and Peaches is going to play there. And um, I know Peaches is not for everybody, but I, oh, sorry, I'm a huge fan. I saw her, um, I think it was 2002 or 2003 opening for Marilyn Manson and ever since then I'm I'm a big fan I tried to see her as much as possible but I haven't been to a concert in five years or so but I'm really excited to see her um, so yeah that's why I'm in Hamburg um, and then another update I get asked um, I get asked a lot if I'm going to be at the Maker Fair in New York and unfortunately I don't think I can make it it's coming up pretty soon I think it's in a couple weeks uh, I can't go to New York all the time. I wish I could, but it's just too expensive. And also, we are starting to prepare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, that's exactly. Marielle was asking if the um, every little defect gets respect. That's a quote from Peaches. Um, I have to say, like her music is very controversial, and she's very, very, very explicit. So if you're not into that, you probably won't like it. But um, yeah, give it a try. Anyways, back to New York. I won't be able to make it to the Maker Fair. We are starting to prepare um, the, the new season of Schrott or Not, the German TV show I'm doing with the kids. Um, right now we are starting to cast kids and then we have to come up with new ideas and concepts for the builds and have to prepare the shop. I would like to get ahead with my content because I know that this will be a very... We are shooting um, even longer than last time, so I might miss a couple videos. Anyways, all these things adding up, I decided I can't make it to the Maker Fair in New York, but I will be at the Maker Fair in Hannover here in Germany, which is from the 25th to the 27th of August. So that's coming up pretty soon too. And we're, uh, and yes, Han Hannover Maker Fair meetup, I will be there. Um, Lucy just added the link. Also, all these links will be in the show notes later. So if you're watching this after it's been live, you, you can check out all the links in the show notes. Um, I think we're going to have a big talk with a couple of European makers. I'm probably forgetting half of it now and I don't have a complete list. But I definitely know that my new <laughs> best maker friend, Jack or whatever, is going to be there. Um, and I cannot wait. I hope we maybe have a couple of days before or after the fair so we can make another video. I really <laughs> had the best time with him. Um, I, I don't know, did you see the, the ghost video thing we did on Instagram? And also he helped me out with my champagne sprinkler video quite a lot. He's a, he's a really good dude. If you don't follow him, you really should. He's, he's a very good maker. All right, so this is 15 minutes. Dude, the time flies so fast. Um, I wanted th the next section is the, the record of the week section, but as I said, um, I wanted to widen that a little bit. So it's not only about um, records or music, it can be movies, it can be games, whatever. This week I decided to talk about markers um, because the, the whole handwriting thing that became a thing for my channel because I don't because I don't talk in my videos. Um, this is a way for me to communicate with you during my videos without interrupting the flow, just to give infos, what kind of wood is that, or where are we in the project. So I think these markers are really cool and the whole hand-drawn type thing, I love it. The thing is you have to have uh, the right marker for the right job and I think the most important thing about handwritten fonts or handwritten type is um, a confidence. You have to go, you have to go all in, otherwise the lines will look weak. So just do it. Be confident about your handwriting and just go for it. And the next thing, um, which is probably even more important, is proportion. So if I have, um, I always use these these tapes as a background. Um, and if I use a super wide tape like this and I write on it with a sharpie, you know, that is, it's just out of proportion unless, unless I go over it a couple of times and then it, and then it looks good again. So you have to keep these things in mind. And what I discovered instead of using the sharpie too much, there are these grok squeezer pens. They come in different thicknesses. This is a, this is a 05. That means five millimeter thick. They have these weird felt tips and you can really, you can push them or squeeze them. Oh, Jacko is here. Mm -hmm. You're late, dude. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can squeeze them and then um, 
they leave a, like they even drip. Can you see that? And that's what I love about these pens. So you can, you can be super confident with your handwriting and it always looks good because it's so, I don't know, proud. I don't know if proud is the right word, but I love these pens. They even come in uh, thicker sizes. I think this one, oh, and they're refillable, which is nice. This one is a 10. Uh, 10 FMP is how they call it and that means it's one centimeter wide. It's a pretty cool, pretty cool pen. Um, but if I'm doing more delicate stuff, you guys know I love my Sharpies. So I try to, like I always have one or two of those in my pocket pockets and when I'm using, this is what I use the most. The um, I will talk about tapes the next week, so I will not say what it is. <laughs> but this is the brand that I use the most and that goes perfect with the thickness of a Sharpie. And actually I think I just ruined this complete roll of gaffer tape because I pushed a little bit too much paint out. And when I met Tom Sachs, he told me that the Sharpie for adults is actually the Crink K70. Um, he gave me this one, so I'm, I haven't used it too much, but it's too precious. <laughs> but from what I can tell, it's a bit thicker than the Sharpie and also more, um, yeah, not, not more, per more pigmented. I don't know, the, the, the ink is thicker. So it's, it's pretty nice. What I do like about Sharpies, the quality is really good, but they're not too expensive. So you don't have to be super sad if you lose them. And I like the whole consumable aspect of that. Um, yeah. Oh, another pen from Crink. Also, Tom Sachs told me about these. Jacko, you know these. They have a pump. Um, you can pump ink into that pen. And then let's find something dark to write on. Maybe this. So you pump it and then it's basically like a, like a huge whiteout pen and you can see like there's a super thick, uh, I don't know, like a lot of paint comes out of it and it's, it's almost, it feels like the paint that you use for a street, like to write on a street. It's crazy. I haven't figured out this pen yet, as you can see, obviously there, um, I think these, these pens need a bit of practice, but. I am super interested in it, so maybe you see more of that in the future. Was that it? I think that was it about pens. So that means oh, 20 minutes. This is perfect. This is perfect. So we have a couple more minutes for questions. Let's see what, what Lucy has for us. Okay. Um, you want to read that? Yeah. Cool. Is that okay? Yeah. Um, did you ever consider a podcast from maybe a European perspective? Yeah, podcast. Yeah. Podcast in general. Mm. I do enjoy being on podcasts. I listen to a lot of podcasts myself. I don't know. So far, nothing. Nobody ever asked me to join a podcast where I'm super interested in the concept. I feel there's a new podcast popping up every week, which is great. But um, if I were to join a podcast it would probably have to be something um, something completely different than, than what is going on right now. Maybe more design related, maybe a podcast with somebody who's not a maker or I don't know. I just saw the question, my favorite podcast beside the Making It podcast. And I talked about it uh, with my Patreons. Is the podcast called My Favorite Murder? If you're into comedy and true crime, which is an awful combination, I totally understand that, but it works, then you should check out My Favorite Murder. It's my it's my favorite podcast. Um, Miles, make with Miles. Um, he oh my. asked. Um, Hi, Miles. <laughs> how often um, did you upload to gain uh, your audience? <sighs> like, in the beginning, yeah. weekly, like. Uh, okay, so I start. I think the first video when I uploaded that, I thought I could maybe do a video every two weeks, but then it was so much fun and the and the feedback was quite good that I realized I will try this. I will try this. What is it the the right way? I will try this with. How do you say that? Dass man direkt komplett versucht. I will give it my all <laughs> and try to upload weekly. So I think the first two or three videos were bi-weekly and then, and then it was weekly, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, most frequently asked question is, um, 
what was your um, toughest thing to build? Like oh, I think it was the happy machine. <laughs> the, right. Yeah, the happy machine. Um, I don't know. It's still one of my favorite projects. Um, I think it's it has one of the lowest views, so it's not popular at all. But um, that was a big project for me, especially since I uploaded a video every day for it was just four days, but that was crazy intense to do all this hard work. There was a big build and then also film this and also edit it. And then the next day start all over again. Yeah. So the happy machine is a, is a special milestone for me. And it's also one of these projects where I really don't care if somebody says, uh, like if there's a troll say anything bad about it, or if the views are not too good, this project is so personal and it was my, yeah, as I said, a milestone for me that I really don't care how it performs. I'm just so happy that it's that it's still there and that I made it. Yeah. A lot of people are asking about the uh, ghost parody you did with Jaco. <laughs> <laughs> like, tell a little bit about it. Okay. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, the ghost thing on Instagram. I was working on the champagne sprinkler. And Jaco really is one of the funniest guys I've ever met. And I was working on it and he was just passing me by and said, want to do a ghost scene? And was just mimicking that, that scene. And we had to laugh so hard and decided, okay, let's, let's just do this. Just, let's stop the build for 10 minutes and make this uh, short ghost scene video. And I, I don't know, we had the best time doing it. It might, it might have been a bit confusing. <laughs> But um, yeah, the, the ghost thing, I'm, I'm very happy, happy for that. Um, will we post the live stream? Yes, the, uh, the live stream will be live, uh, will be uh, offline after we're offline. So I think that will automatically upload to YouTube. Not sure how it is about the beginning because it was on unlisted and now it's, we will see. But it will be saved and you'll have time to... Uh, watch it later if you didn't have the opportunity to jump on the live stream. Dude, we are 400 people. That's crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. I'm so glad I can't see everybody. Otherwise, I would probably pee my pants. <laughs> uh, what is your dream build? My dream build? Oh, man. Every week. Anything? I think it's always the, the project that I'm working on right now is usually what I'm most excited about. I would like to build a camper. Uh, I did that for my design school thing, like the, my, my master project was to build a camper and I really enjoyed that. Back then I only had a drill and a jigsaw, so I would love to, to vi revisit that idea and build a camper from scratch or buy an old bus or van and yeah, and uh, was that, turn that into a camper. Yeah. Right, more? Yeah, one more? Yeah, one know. more. Um, does the pressure of building spoil the hobby? No, no, I absolutely enjoy the pressure and I also need the pressure. The thing was before I documented my process um, uh, as a YouTube video or as a video, I was always struggling to uh, finish stuff. So I had this idea and I want to test and I tested new material. So let's see if I can build a table just from scratch, blah, blah, blah. And then um, once I got to the point where, where I could tell this is going to work, I would stop, I would stop working on the project. So usually it would sit there without a finish or with only a table with only three legs because I lost interest. So um, I, I forgot what the question was, but oh, the pressure. <laughs> So for me, it is really cool to have this routine now. So YouTube structures my process a bit more. I have to be done within a week. It has to be a project that I can financially afford. And it has to be a project that also works for a story. And that's a lot of pressure. And I think that's exactly what I need. Um, if I have all the time in the world, all the money in the world, I would probably never get anything done. I need the limitation and pressure is a form of limitation, I think. So I love it. Yep. yep. And I think, I mean, we're, I think it's 25 minutes. I think we're good. I'm just seeing another freak bike. There will be plenty more freak bikes for sure. So don't worry about that. Um, but yeah, I think you want to say bye, Lucy? Bye everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I think this was great. I'm a little bit shocked that we didn't have a single troll. So next time I expect a little more of your internet. Um, but so far the, it was great. Um, 
let me know what you think about it. If this is like even from a time frame, is that too long? Is that too short? You want more questions, less questions? Let me know what you think. I feel really good about it. And um, I'm returning from yeah. Hamburg to Cologne next uh, Sunday, but I think I should, I should be able to make it um, for the same time. So five o'clock for Germany and yeah, as I posted last time, these will be the times for next week's live stream. But as I said, follow me on Twitter, Instagram or Facebook. If anything happens, if the train has a delay or anything, let me know, uh, follow me and I will let you know if the time and the scheduling changes. Oh, all right, guys, this is cool. Yeah. Thanks for hanging out and I will see you next week. Bye bye.